A group of Panda Express employees basically put together this giant PDF file. It is basically a book with all the dishes served at Panda Express, including ingredients, the correct amounts and the actual preparation. I have never seen anything like this. I downloaded the file and immediately the first thing I do, orange chicken. That is my favorite dish at Panda Express. This is allegedly the official recipe for the Panda Express orange chicken leaked by actual employees. Mind blown. Before we move on to the actual chicken part of the dish, we need to prepare these basic sauces that are kind of the foundation of every dish at Panda Express. They're simple enough to follow, I think. This this one is called a basic sauce. This is one quarter of a cup of water with xanthan gum, which is a very interesting ingredient. It's kind of like jelly, but I don't know why, but it's a little bit chunky, mine. So this is the water with the xanthan gum, which is going to be like the thickening agent. Legally, I may not be able to tell you every single ingredient. There will be links in the description down below with every single detail that you need to replicate these dishes. Sit back, get a snack, and just enjoy the video. This is white sugar. This is corn syrup. And here we've got salt, MSG, white pepper, and ginger. And this is basically the last ingredient that goes into what is the foundation of every dish at Panda Express. I'll try not to make a mess here, but this all goes in there. You could even make a big batch of this and just sort of keep it in the fridge. And every time you make one of the one of the Panda Express recipes, you just have to use this. It's pretty simple. The reason why I'm using this plastic container is so I can shake it and make sure this is like well blended. It is a little bit lumpy because of the gum. Hopefully this will get there. When I think of eating at Panda Express, this is not what I expected to be the base of every dish. A brown liquid. So I'm going to write basic on here. So this is one of the two sauces that we're going to need to make our orange chicken. We can move on to making the orange chicken sauce. This is, in my opinion, the best sauce at Panda Express. So we're going to start with vinegar, water. This is cornstarch, sugar, the most popular ingredient at Panda Express. And I'm sorry to disappoint if any of you thought that there was actual orange in the orange chicken. It's fake. It's fake orange. So we're gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of orange extract. Powerful stuff. And now you will understand why we had to make the basic sauce in first place, because we're gonna be using this for basically every Panda Express recipe. We're gonna make sure we mix the basic sauce. We're supposed to add two tablespoons into the orange chicken. This is basically like chemistry. <laughs> I don't think we've ever followed a leaked recipe that I believed more that it is the real deal than this. And that is basically it. Once it's all measured out, it's honestly not that difficult, but I will also be honest and say that it does not look like what I thought it would look like. I thought it would be way more complex than this, than to mix a bunch of ingredients, but this is it. We're gonna make sure all the corn flour and everything is well mixed. Wow, and that is basically it. This is how you make the batter, the coating for the Panda Express chicken. We're starting with corn flour or corn starch. Plain flour, water, vegetable oil, one egg, it's a very liquid egg, salt and pepper, and we're supposed to mix this whole thing. Everything will be linked and organized in the description down below. It's a very dry mixture, <laughs> like it's almost difficult to mix. It reminds me of like donut dough because it's got that less stickiness but it's simple enough to make so it's truly like an interesting consistency i just i don't know how this is supposed to stick to the chicken i think this doesn't come as a surprise but at panda express they use chicken thighs because obviously it's got more flavor so we're gonna add that into the mixture and i think we just this is not mixing too well I am a little bit worried, but I am not paid to think, I am paid to do. So this has to go in the fridge for 30 minutes. Maybe something magical will happen where this will kind of like stick to the chicken. So while this sat in the fridge, the chicken did stick to the batter. Let me try to show you. Look at this. The chicken became like stuck to the batter and all it took was literally 30 minutes in the fridge. We're also supposed to drop the chicken one piece at a time so that it doesn't stick. So this is apparently very important. Okay, one. Oh, this is gonna be a really long one. These are frying quite well, actually. But I'm pretty impressed with the batter. This seems like it's gonna work. 
Some of the pieces look a little bit too big. It depends on what kind of chicken cuts you use. Very interesting. It looks very, very pale. I can kind of see how this is going to become the Panda Express chicken. We're gonna put this on a grate. These do look kind of like restaurant quality chicken already, just not the right color, but like the texture of it. The second batch looks even better because the size, it's more similar to the actual Panda Express stuff, so. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer until they freeze completely and then we're gonna refry these. So we just got the chicken out of the freezer and it looks pretty similar. It's just very, very cold. It's making me a little bit worried whether this is gonna cook or not, but I mean, we're following instructions. Now we should be okay to put them all at the same time because they're basically not going to stick together anymore. These are supposed to cook for four to five minutes. I'm guessing more towards the five minutes. I don't know why. And we're gonna replace this because this is like contaminated. Oh, this sounds real aggressive. This should basically be the orange chicken from Panda Express. We're definitely starting to get there. I mean, this does look like the orange chicken, minus the sauce, obviously. I think we're going in the right path. I mean, I could be wrong, but like, it smells like a professional restaurant. It really does. It's so crispy. Listen to this. It's super, super crispy. So this is the moment in which everything is supposed to come together. We're basically frying the chicken in the sauce that we prepared. So in order to do this exactly like in the restaurant, there are a few extra things that we need to add before adding the chicken. I'm going to put this on the stir fry setting. First of all, we're adding one tablespoon of oil. So this is all to sort of help fry the chicken. To this, we're adding half a teaspoon of sherry wine, which honestly, I don't even know what it is. This is basically crushed garlic and crushed ginger in vegetable oil. It smells incredible. So adding half a teaspoon of this. We're also adding some of these chili flakes in oil as well. So this is just supposed to add, I guess, some extra flavor. We're supposed to toast this up just a little bit until it's fragrant. I think that's what it said on the recipe. I am so hungry right now. Like this is a lot of steps. I think this is gonna work out exactly the same. Could even increase the temperature a little bit. I'm gonna make sure that the sauce is well mixed before we add it. Wow, it smells very strong of vinegar and orange. I think that's about right. Oops. So this is going to be the sauce in which the chicken is supposed to cook. It's kind of bubbling up a little bit. I think it's the sugar. So I'm gonna add the chicken. It literally smells like a professional restaurant, except it's me cooking. So we're just going to... Oh, it smells very vinegary, orangey. It's getting thick very, very quickly. Wow. This sauce is truly quite something. It makes my eyes burn. I think that's the vinegar. A vinegar orange caramel. Wow. We need to cook this a little bit longer, but look how shiny the pieces of chicken look. One of the chickens is peeling off a little bit, but that's okay. I don't think you guys understand how incredible this looks. This literally is possibly the best thing I've ever cooked ever. Definitely the best fried chicken I have ever made. Oh, it's starting to burn, I think. I just want you guys to see how sticky this is. Do you see these? I hope you guys can see on camera like these strings of like, I don't even know what it is. The stickiness of it is literally out of a restaurant. Look at that, it literally pulls. We're supposed to finish it with a half a teaspoon of sesame oil around the brim. I'm gonna just toss it. And that is basically the recipe for orange chicken. Oh. The color could have been a little bit deeper, but I was kind of scared of like burning it. So I didn't want to push it too far, but I kind of did in a few spots. Other than that, and also ignoring the size because mine are a little bit bigger, I would say this looks, look at this stickiness, it literally won't even fall off. This is literally a bowl of Panda Express chicken. Down to the texture, the shininess. This is the most complex leaked recipe that we've ever followed. Like I truly believe that this is real, but obviously it comes down to the flavor. I might as well just open a Panda Express at this point. I mean, I have enough basic sauce and orange sauce for this. First of all, did you hear, I can only hope that you heard the ASMR. Second of all, it's my opinion, this is the Panda Express chicken. I mean, I'm not surprised this time around because this came from an actual chef. Unbelievable. Some bits are crunchy. 
just like it's supposed to be. It's sweet, sour. It literally tastes exactly like the Panda Express one. I've probably tried over 50 leaked recipes. This is the most accurate one. This is supposed to be the leaked recipe for the Taco Bell quesadilla. One of their most popular items. This has been leaked by many people who claim to have been Taco Bell workers. I found a source that seems really reliable. There's one thing in common with all the leaked recipes for the Taco Bell quesadilla. It's that the most important thing for the flavor is the quesadilla sauce. That is exactly where we're gonna start with. First ingredient that you will need for the quesadilla sauce is some mayo. I think this is about half a cup of mayo, but you know, all the ingredients and everything will be in the description. The second ingredient is sour cream. So the base is basically a combination of mayo and sour cream. This makes quite a big amount. So if you're only making one quesadilla, maybe you can make like a quarter of this. If the sauce tastes like the Taco Bell one, you can just basically add this to everything. And this is the exact combination of spices to get the Taco Bell flavor, which basically is two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic, half a teaspoon of curry powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. It's quite a lot of spices for this amount of like cream base. And the last ingredient, and I would honestly call this the star of the quesadilla sauce from Taco Bell, specifically the actual peppers, but also the juice from the peppers. Three tablespoons, no liquid, just the actual jalapeno peppers. I don't want to scratch my eyes after this. So that's one tablespoon and that is three tablespoons of the peppers. We're supposed to basically dice these up really, really thinly, basically as thinly as you can. I think I'm just gonna run the knife a few times. When you have the Taco Bell quesadillas, you know that there's no actual chunks of peppers. I don't think so, at least. You really want to get this well blended. This is very close to becoming like a paste. So we're gonna add all of that into the bowl with all the rest of the ingredients. Maybe I should have done a better job. Maybe you should put this on a blender and that'll be a lot easier. The last step is to add three tablespoons of the actual, like the brine or like the juice from the peppers. And this is supposed to be the Taco Bell secret ingredient. This is really what's gonna take this from homemade to restaurant kind of flavor, allegedly, and according to the people who work there. We're gonna mix all of this up. And it does seem a little bit liquidy because of all the juice. It smells like Taco Bell. It's just like being a Taco Bell. It is towards the liquidy side, but hopefully it's gonna be fine. I was kind of expecting a spread, but this is actually more like a sauce. It's very liquidy. We've got everything that we need to actually assemble the quesadillas, but this is a copycat recipe after all. And I was looking at the sauce. I just have to do it. The texture is not perfect because in the real one, it's perfectly smooth. So we're gonna try to smooth this out. By the way, this is a lot thicker now than before. So maybe you need to let it sit for like just three minutes. Oh Wait, this looks a lot better and also, the color is exactly the same as the real one. This on the spoon was the color of it before I blended it and this is after. This is a lot more like that yellow kind of like tone of the Taco Bell quesadilla. So I think, honestly, just blend it if you've got those extra. It takes like three minutes to do this. I think Taco Bell uses a large tortilla and they basically fold it in half and then cut it into four. I actually bought the smaller tortillas. I'm just gonna do more like a traditional style quesadilla, which is one on top of the other. If you've ever worked at Taco Bell or any other fast food chain from this video or other videos, please leave it in the comment section how you actually make these items. Feel free to call me out on what is wrong and what is right because people wanna know. I don't take it personally, I don't care. So I'm gonna put the tortilla in here. The first cheese that we're gonna use is basically just the standard American cheese, like the processed cheese. Then we're gonna add the sauce that we made. So you wanna add that. I think Taco Bell is quite generous with the sauce. They're just not generous with the other toppings. <laughs> this is what's gonna make it taste like Taco Bell. The other cheese they use is basically Monterey Jack cheese. Very difficult to find for me, but it's very common in other countries. So hopefully you guys can find it. They're not too generous with the cheese. For the last step, you basically have to decide whether you want this to be a chicken quesadilla or a regular one. The actual recipes were just for the cheese one, but because I've got a chicken one there, I'm just adding some shredded chicken, any kind of shredded chicken, I 
think we'll be fine. I'm gonna do a little bit more cheese on top just to make sure this sticks. I honestly don't know what the right way is to make this part, so it's mostly about the ingredients rather than the steps. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the sauce that we made just to kind of season the chicken and everything because I don't want this to toast too much. I think I'm just gonna put the lid on already and I'm gonna be ready to flip this. I wanna squish it down quite a lot. It smells like going to Taco Bell. I honestly, no words to describe. It smells exactly like Taco Bell. I'm gonna check if this is not, yep, it's getting there. I didn't want this to brown, but I think it's a bit light now. The thickness, the sides, it... look at this side here. That's exactly what the Taco Bell quesadillas are like. I think this is ready. As you can see, it's, it's very melty. I think I'm gonna transfer this to a plate and we're gonna let it cool down. All that cheese on the sides, I honestly think this looks a lot like the Taco Bell one, but we'll know once we try it. This is the official Taco Bell quesadilla, and this is our quesadilla. I'm gonna slice it, and I have a feeling this is gonna look even more similar. Like, do you see that on the sides? This is a Taco Bell quesadilla. The cheese has even got that fake, like, plastic, like, color, but also shine to it. It's almost freaky. I'm not cutting it exactly like Taco Bell does, but I guess that doesn't even matter if the flavor is the same. I wish I would have used a large tortilla because I think then it would have looked actually 100% the same. If it wasn't for the shape, I honestly think that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the real one and the Taco Bell one. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Taco Bell one. The chicken is gonna be different. This tastes like this one smells. Now the one that we actually made. <laughs> Even with the chicken not being exactly the same, this one is still warm, this one's cold. Apart from that, I 100% believe this is how you make the Taco Bell quesadilla. This sauce makes this taste like the Taco Bell one. I would honestly not even be able to tell the difference. Even with the chicken being different, this is, in my opinion, 100% the same. There's this huge PDF file that basically has every single recipe for every item that McDonald's has ever sold in like the last 20 years. To be completely honest, I don't know where it comes from, but this seems legit. A lot of people follow the recipes and they swear that this works. You will be able to replicate every McDonald's recipe. Immediately, what I was interested in was the McDonald's fries. I mean, objectively, the best French fries in the world. And the reason why I believe this, the first ingredient for these McDonald's French fries, a whole lot of sugar. Before we move on to cutting the fries, we're gonna start with the fries marinade. Yes, this is the thing. So you're gonna need some white sugar. I think this is around one quarter of a cup. This is corn syrup. That's not what I expected. I mean, kind of makes sense because they are addictive, but that's a whole lot of sugar. Corn syrup and sugar are basically the sweetest things on earth. This is truly a weird recipe because the next ingredient is one cup of hot water, like boiling hot water. Actually, it's one and a half cups. One more half cup. I've never made french fries like this. According to the leaked recipe, they basically say for us to mix this until the sugar is basically dissolved, until you can't really see it anymore, until it becomes like see-through. We're basically making a soaking, like simple syrup for potatoes. I mean, this went crystal clear. Once this is done, we can set this aside and start working on cutting the potatoes, which honestly, kind of an important step. I peeled two large potatoes. Some people say that you should be using Idaho potatoes, which I couldn't find, but apparently russet potatoes is also something that will work. The only thing that is truly necessary, you need a french fry cutter, because without one of these, they're not gonna look like the McDonald's ones. Oh man, I don't know. I've never used one of these before. Mm, interesting. At McDonald's, this is basically done in the factory. They don't do this at the restaurant, but we're trying to replicate what their machines do. Okay, we're getting there. This is very difficult. We are slowly getting there, but I'm not gonna lie, this is not the easiest job in the world. This is not really working, so maybe I can use a knife and sort of try to follow the lines. I think this might work. So I kind of had to do this manually, but I feel like you will be okay. This is what I ended up with, which I think that's pretty good considering we basically did this with just a knife, just kind of following the lines. 
keep in mind, these are obviously not as long as the McDonald's ones. They're pretty regular, which I think is gonna make them look, they already look like fast food french fries a little bit. So, so you wanna toss this into the, what is now warm water with sugar. You just wanna put it all in there make sure that it's all well coated. I know this is weird. We didn't use any other seasoning other than water and sugar. They look very shiny. Wow, they look like almost artificial. Apparently this is supposed to be the most important step, which is you want to basically plastic wrap this and we're going to put this in the fridge for 30 minutes, 30 minutes exactly. And then this is supposed to be ready for frying. I don't really know. The fries have been in the fridge for around 30 minutes and this has basically reached the right temperature, like the vegetable shortening. It did take a while to melt, but it did get there. And these are just, wow, these feel very soft. Oh my God. It's like, it's so sticky. It's like sugar. That is the only seasoning that we've done on the fries so far. Wait, can you put water into oil? So we're gonna transfer our sugar French fries into this. And the interesting thing is this is only supposed to cook for one to two minutes right now. And then we're gonna put it in the fridge and then fry it again. So I'm gonna set up a timer for two minutes and that's how long this is gonna cook for. Two minutes, starting now. Oh man, I hope this doesn't explode. Okay, I'm kind of scared. So I've got a plate with a paper towel because that is what the instructions are saying. And these are basically, oh. So we're getting these out. That smells incredible, but I am, I don't know if these look like McDonald's fries. These are supposed to go in the fridge for 10 minutes and then we're gonna finish deep frying them after. If you wanna make this taste like the 90s McDonald's fries, apparently they used to use beef dripping. So this is the part when you add one quarter of that, but instead I'm adding vegetable oil instead to the vegetable shortening. I don't even know what it does. So we just got these out of the fridge. So these are basically ready to go on the deep fryer. Again, this is supposed to fry from five to seven minutes, but because mine already have such a nice color, I'm guessing more towards the five minutes. So we're gonna put the fries in here. This is so weird because these already feel cooked. They're holding shape really well. I'm not sure if they look like McDonald's fries though. They look a little bit too toasty. So we're gonna put them in once again. Um, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> they didn't even cook for that long. I think it might've been the fact that we use sugar on the outside. They feel like McDonald's fries. They smell like McDonald's fries, but they look like sweet potato fries. And this is not what I was, this is not what I was expecting. So the last step is to basically just salt them generously, just like they do at McDonald's. But the color, it's completely wrong. I think it might've been all the sugar. So I'm gonna just put them in here, really hoping this was going to look a lot different. The interesting thing is that they do remind me of McDonald's fries. Wait, let me remove this paper so you actually can see. They remind me of McDonald's fries, it's just, entirely the wrong color. And it's said to fry them for five to seven minutes at the end, and I fry them for five minutes. So I was definitely on the safer side. It's truly a shame because if the color was right, I honestly think these would have looked incredible. <laughs> these taste like McDonald's fries. They really do. If I had my eyes closed, crispy on the outside and fluffy in the center, which is the McDonald's signature. That's what these taste like. This tastes incredible. I can't believe there's so much sugar in them. If you don't mind that they look dark, try it. It does not taste burned. It does not taste weird. It just tastes like McDonald's fries. It just doesn't look exactly the same. This is allegedly the official leaked recipe for the chow mein from Panda Express. And this also comes from that big PDF file. It kind of has basically the whole Panda Express menu and it did serve as well earlier. So, so the first thing they do at Panda Express is they basically cook the noodles. So you kind of want to start with the noodles already cooked and drained because that will be important just to make things faster. Okay, I'm going to use the stir fry setting. We're going to start by adding vegetable oil. 
because the noodles are already cooked this is kind of just the stir frying part so we're adding the vegetable oil we're supposed to do this on a very high heat to this we're gonna add cabbage this is just shredded cabbage that i basically shredded myself i'm not gonna lie this is an insane amount of cabbage but the recipe says that this is supposed to just cook down because right now there's no space for nothing else just cabbage i basically got a job at panda express so the oil is well distributed. This is actually supposed to cook on very high heat, so we just gotta be brave. With this, we're gonna add the celery and the onions, specifically cut into rounds. I'm trying my best here, but I'm scared I'm gonna have frying oil in my eyeball. The cabbage doesn't cook down. We don't have space for anything else, so this better start to cook down sooner than later. It's starting to cook down a little bit. It's very well oiled up. I've always wanted to do that. I love my job at Panda Express. So now that this is getting a little bit toasty, I'm basically gonna add the noodles now. These are chow mein noodles and they're supposed to be cooked just according to the instructions. I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to mix this together, but I will get there. It might take a while, but we'll get there. We're basically bringing these noodles back to life. It looks really good, but I just feel like it needs a little bit more color. So I'm thinking of basically boosting up the heat just to toast this a little bit. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of this sherry wine. Oh, this looks a lot better. Okay, we're getting there. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of this. They call it basic sauce for a reason because you can basically add this to anything. So we're doing one, two, three. And last but not least, we're adding some sesame oil, but we're doing it just around the brim. So this, the color is looking a whole lot better, but I still feel like we could cook this just a little bit longer. It's shiny, it smells incredible after we added the basic sauce. So when you're done, you should get something that kind of looks like this. I've never made noodles that look this professional like they're shiny and like kind of toasty sticky they smell sweet and like they smell like restaurant quality we're trying to save the environment here so we're eating it on a plate just imagine I think it's really similar but I don't have Panda Express here to compare it with do you think this looks any similar because to me it does but I could obviously be wrong please let me know in the comments Ooh, this is gonna be good I've been like transported to the first time I've been to Panda Express. I was so scared that I was gonna forget what the Panda Express chow mein tastes like. And this literally just brought it back. These people really have done something when they leak these recipes. I don't wanna get in trouble with Panda Express because I know we've tried two of their recipes in this video. I'm only trying the recipes, I wasn't the one sharing it, but this is like that meme of Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man. These noodles versus the ones on the actual menu pointing at each other because they're the same. This is supposed to be a leaked copycat recipe for the McDonald's pancakes, or I think some people call them hot cakes. I don't know if I made that up, but I think it's a thing. The recipe comes from this mystery PDF file with all the McDonald's recipes. Basically two ingredients, one of them being Sprite. First thing you need is this Bisquick pancake and baking mix. I've honestly never seen this before. I bought this from an American store. I hope you can find it in your country. I don't know. I don't know if this is like a popular brand. We're gonna start with one cup of this Bisquick pancake mix. So that's around one cup. So this is, it's hard to believe this is supposed to taste like the McDonald's pancakes. I'm not the biggest fan of the McDonald's pancakes, but I know a lot of people have, it's like a cult following, like my sister, for example, that's possibly her favorite pancakes ever. I don't really get it, but to this, we're supposed to add a bottle of Sprite into this mixture. <laughs> Suddenly, I believe that this is actually what they do at McDonald's. I don't know if we're doing this for the bubbliness to recreate the texture. I don't know exactly what the science is, but I will tell you if it works. And also half a cup of water. And if you mix this, this is apparently how to make the batter for the flavor and texture of the McDonald's pancakes. So we're gonna combine this. I don't really know if we should over or under mix it because it kind of has like all these bubbles. It's like bubbling up from the Sprite. 
That kind of smells like McDonald's pancakes. And look at the color, it's so white. So the recipe says for us to use some vegetable shortening, but not too much, just a little bit. And you can obviously do this on a frying pan, I think. I think we'll be just fine. This is getting too hot already. Oh. These are supposed to be five inches. I don't really know how I'm gonna do this. Okay, I think, is that five inches? I was raised with the metric system. They kind of do look like McDonald's pancakes, actually, strangely. So they're only supposed to cook for one minute in one side and then 40 to 50 seconds on the other one. This one should be ready, but I don't really know how to get there. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Wait, that looks exactly, that looks like a McDonald's pancake. The first one looks exactly like a McDonald's pancake. I'm gonna show you, maybe just like 10 more seconds and then I'll show you. I honestly think this is real. I need to show you because I wouldn't believe it either. I know you guys probably think that I'm lying, but I promise you. Imagine some syrup on this. Please tell me this doesn't look exactly like a McDonald's pancake. And even the back, that's what their pancakes look like. They literally look like this. Cause they're so small, they cook very, very quickly. So these are basically ready. Also the McDonald's pancakes are not very toasty. So I'm trying to make a nice stack of pancakes. This looks strangely like fast food pancakes. I really do believe these are going to taste exactly like the McDonald's pancakes because right now we're basically looking at a McDonald's advert. Like, that is 100% a McDonald's pancake. Before I put any syrup in it, I'm gonna taste just the back because I don't want the syrup to obviously change what we actually think of this. It's literally got the McDonald's signature, like fast food artificial scent. I don't mean this as shade, but it really, really does. Kind of like steamed undercooked. These are exactly the same. Not my favorite pancakes, obviously, because I don't love the McDonald's ones, but they it's two ingredients. If you wanna know if I'm telling the truth, just try it. So the actual syrup that they use in McDonald's, it's obviously made by them, but it's supposed to be very similar to the Aunt, Je Aunt Jemina, Aunt Jemima. I'm not American. We don't have those kinds of syrups. So I'm just using a standard maple syrup. It looks good, good enough. I'm just gonna get like, ooh, I'm gonna cut through all the pancakes. They're like fluffy but doughy. Insane. With the sauce, it makes this a lot better. And actually, I would go as far as saying enjoyable. I don't think my syrup is the same as the McDonald's one. The McDonald's one is not as good as mine because this made the pancakes really, really good. In my opinion, this is how you accomplish the same texture and flavor very, very close to the original. One of my favorite dips in fast food in general is the Taco Bell cheese dip. I mean, there's just something about it that it's... It does taste like fast food, but there's... Something artificial about it, but that also is incredibly addictive and it's very deep, cheesy flavor. So I went on this fast food forum and I was looking for a Taco Bell employee that would be willing to share. And I found something really interesting that only takes three ingredients. Turns out, and this might come as a shock to some people, the cheese sauce from Taco Bell, if you look at the ingredients, it's basically exactly the same as this product called Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz. I'm not American, guys. This is very difficult for me. I've never heard of these products. It's basically this dip, this like cheese dip that you can buy to dip your chips. And this is basically the perfect base for replicating the Taco Bell dip. I think it's not gonna be as yellow because Cheese Whiz is more like a, a more natural yellow, while the Taco Bell one is a little more intense. Actually, it might be fine. This is surprisingly simple and you might be able to just impress your friends with knowing how to make the Taco Bell cheese sauce. This is basically the juice from a jar of pickled green jalapenos. So you wanna add that. I mean, I don't know how this is not gonna be too liquidy. And this is whole milk and this is supposed to be the exact same flavor. So we wanna mix this. It's looking a little bit on the liquidy side. I don't wanna discredit these people. It seems like this is gonna be drinkable. Actually, maybe, I don't know. Wait, as you blend it, it starts to become a lot like the texture from the Taco Bell one, but the color is entirely different. I think it's the pickle juice and the milk are becoming like thick, 
Wait, that is the texture of the Taco Bell one. If this had a little bit of food coloring, this would be exactly the same. It's basically the same as the Taco Bell one in terms of texture and in terms of smell. I will be honest, the color is different. So this one is a little more natural cheese color. Should we add some yellow food coloring to this? Just take this to the next level. This brand of food coloring that I use for video stuff, it's very, very powerful. Oh my god, that was a lot. Okay, I'm gonna get the gloves out without touching anything. So I'm gonna slowly, without this going everywhere. This is us attempting to make this radioactive yellow. I think we got there. This is now the same texture, but also the same color. I, I really do think it's similar. So I'm gonna pour some of the cheese sauce on here on the lid. I mean, this is spilling everywhere, but I'm pretty happy with this but it comes down to the flavor. So I got some Taco Bell fries. I'm gonna dip it in the original one. I never realized, but you can really taste jalapeno juice and like, I don't know, there's something vinegary about it. Not the one that we came up with. It's really, really close. I would say the texture of it, it's perfect. Mine is just slightly a tiny little bit more grainy, that is the only difference. Flavor-wise, I would not be able to tell the difference. I'm being completely honest with you guys. This is really weird. This is supposed to be a copycat recipe for the McDonald's sweet and sour sauce, which honestly, I think this is a superior sauce at McDonald's. It's literally perfect with chicken nuggets. Sometimes I want chicken nuggets from different restaurants, but I'll go to McDonald's because of the sweet and sour sauce. So the ingredients are the most shocking and surprising in this whole video. So we got the recipe from that PDF file that has all the McDonald's recipes. And this one really stood out to me when I was going through it because the base for the McDonald's sweet and sour sauce. Pause the video and guess in the comment section what the main ingredient is. I honestly promise that nobody's gonna get it. It's very bizarre. Apricot preserve. I don't even know what apricot preserve is, but it's basically the base of this sauce. And if you thought that wasn't weird enough, the other ingredient is peach preserve. I wonder if peach preserve is the same as peach jam. Clever people, please let me know. Actually explains a lot. It explains the color of the sauce. To this, we're gonna add corn syrup. This is actually light corn syrup. This is vinegar. So I think this is where the sour comes from. It's white vinegar. This is equal parts mustard and equal parts soy sauce. How did someone come up with this in first place? I'm just as confused as you are. This is salt and garlic powder. And the thickening agent is cornstarch. And we've got the real one here to compare it with. It kind of looks like something like this. It does not look like it's going to become anything that I would want to dip my chicken nuggets in. What you want to do is blend this until it's like uniform and then we're still going to have to cook this. So we're going to put the blender in there. Wait. I don't think you understand. This is exactly the same texture. Just look at this texture. That is the sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's. And it's not even cooked yet, so we're supposed to cook this. I am so confused. I am truly, truly confused. So now we're supposed to add the sauce, which already has a copycat texture. And we're adding two tablespoons of water. And this is supposed to come to a boil for exactly five minutes. And when you're done with the five minutes, it's supposed to thicken up a little bit so the texture will be exactly the same as the McDonald's stuff. So I'm just gonna mix the water a little bit in and the timer is already counting. So let's see what it looks like. In my opinion, the texture is already great. So I wonder what it will look like in five minutes. It's only been like three minutes, but I would say the texture is actually perfect. I 100% understand what we're doing. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. I mean, it is actually the perfect texture. I felt like this would be a more difficult sauce to make. I never thought it would be something that you could make with regular ingredients. So I'm gonna pour our sauce. I mean, that is basically the McDonald's sauce, right? 
I just know this is gonna taste exactly the same as well. I kind of want to lick it, but wait, I want to wait for my reaction. On this side, I'm gonna pour the actual McDonald's sauce. Are you kidding me? It's the same sauce, except we made a lot more. This might end up being the most similar any of these recipes has ever looked. I'm looking at two glasses of basically the same thing. This has never ever happened before in this series, but I'm actually scared of forgetting which one is which. So I'm just gonna say it for the record, the one with more is the one I made. This one is the one from McDonald's. We will taste it, but just, just want you to see, this is the texture of the one I made. And this is the McDonald's one. I would never be able to tell the difference, even from the smell. I'm gonna dip it on the original one first, and then I wanna see how he sticks to the nugget. And then I'm gonna dip it on the one I made. That keep in mind is still warm. <laughs> it coats the nugget exactly the same. This is actually shocking. Like, I feel like this one is gonna get me in trouble. I am starting to get scared. I don't even remember which one is which. That's how similar these are. I didn't switch, right? This is a chicken nugget from McDonald's. An incredible sauce. Now that I know what's in it, my brain is like, did we just taste peach? And this is the one that we've made. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. The ingredients are simple enough that I, that I want you guys to try it. Please try it and compare both. I'm gonna go to jail. I literally am gonna go to jail. This sauce warmed up is insane. This literally tastes like, it kind of reminds me of the orange chicken. Maybe I'm gonna start warming up the McDonald's sauce. Is that allowed? This is so, so good. I have no words. Literally, the only difference is the temperature. This one's cold, this one's hot. They are 150% the same sauce. This is one of my favorite series that we've ever created on my channel. The only reason why I don't make a lot of these episodes is because I get very stressed that something might go wrong, that might upset some people. But that is the reason why I don't make these episodes as often, but I really, truly enjoy this series. All of this to tell you that if you like it too, please don't forget to give the video a like and also subscribe and switch my notifications on. Only if you like my videos and if you would like more episodes to this series. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.